You know what? I normally don't post any videos on Sundays, but uh, can you promise not to tell my mom? Can we can we let that slide this, this one time? Alright, so today it's time for a best of three series of Protoss versus Zerg, where in game number one we find ourselves on the map Beckett Industries. I can't help but notice, okay, that our Zerg player was not actually making anything right there on the production tab. So spawning here in the bottom left hand corner of the map, playing with the red Zerg drones, we have a Bly and his opponent going for a very quick probe scout, ready to block that natural expansion, which is not gonna go up here anytime soon. But playing with the blue Protoss probes from Denmark, we have Maxpex. Alrighty, so Maxpex versus Bly, I mean, okay. Bly is one of the- oh, this is so annoying, yeah. Both of these players are very well known for playing cheeky games of StarCraft. Maxpex, especially though, over the last couple of months, has really started making a name for himself. However, Bly is still Bly. So this is an important scout here. Maxpex saw the drone going down towards the low ground. Bly faked going for the third base instead of going for the natural, but he's now sending that drone towards the other side of the map. Can he block the hatch? Okay, he cannot. Immediately a forge comes up. Um, this is one of those builds that I've only ever really seen Bly do, but obviously Maxpex has as well. He knows that Bly is very well capable of this, so he decides to pull three more workers. Every single time I've seen Bly go for this particular build, so it's a 12 spawning pool right now into probably like 10 Zerklings or so, and then a hatchery instead of his opponent's wall. Every single time I've seen Bly go for this build, the opponents just seem to be a little bit lost. It's probably theoretically not that great of a strategy to play, Okay, so he decides to block the natural as well, which is probably important. But um, maybe Max can show us exactly how you're supposed to respond to this. So obviously this messes up the wall off. Obviously Bly can just cancel this hatchery and create like a really, you know, big space right here for the Zerklings to run in. Zerklings though, are gonna have a little bit of time to gather themselves over here before he needs to cancel that hatchery. He doesn't even have to cancel the hatchery actually, but already a photon cannon is coming up. Cybercore at a respectable time. A couple of Zerklings right now are working on that uh, pylon in the natural. I think this looks really good though for Max, doesn't it? And before the Zerklings just all run in, but I think that this is looking pretty fine. He's gonna be able to kill the gateway, okay. Completes the wall off with another pylon. This was very clean. Um, so big picture over here. I mean, obviously the forge was forced out as well. So generally speaking... You don't really want to grab that at this point in the game, but I mean, it's 22 workers right now. Ooh, even gets the follow-up uh, deny over there of the natural, though already the third hatch was taken. Um, but now it's it's 22 workers versus 16 for the Zerg. Nexus comes up. Yeah. I think all things considered, this is now looking like a relatively normal game with Protoss ever so slightly ahead, right? I actually really like that he, uh, that he blocked the natural expansion over there because... Made this game a little bit more annoying for the Zerg player to play. He decides to go for the third hatchery first. This does give the indication right now to the Protoss as well. That there's definitely not going to be any Zerking speed here anytime soon. Because if you go for such a quick third hatchery as a follow-up... Well, that's awkward. <laughs> Almost got surrounded. Uh, but if you go for such a quick third hatchery as a follow-up, there's no way that Zerg has also already taken the gas guys. Or, I mean, that would really be... Ah, maybe you could, but that would make it like a complete Zerkling all-in, which doesn't really make a whole lot of sense against this. So I think, for at least a little while, our Protoss player should have map control here. Alright, so an explosive game right from the get-go. I like it. Oh, actually pops the Queen right here in the speed-up circle, so the Queen could actually maneuver around a lot more freely off creep. That's kind of cool. Alright, Twilight Council here as a follow-up as well. So no Stargate. Cool. Most of the time it seems to be a Stargate follow-up here. But uh, Max apparently has decided that even though he's quite well known for that Stargate shenanigans, he goes for the Twilight and now into a Robo instead. So I'm assuming this is going to be Glaive? I mean, it should be Glaive the Depth, but I mean, it could go into Dark Shrine as well if he wants to. Could even go into Blink if he really wants to, but I feel like Glaive's is probably, other than Stargate openers, the most common follow-up. Although so far, he doesn't have the minerals for it. Okay, yeah, there we go. So far, he didn't start anything up. Roach Warren, though, already on the other side of the map as well here for Bly. This is some high-level StarCraft right from the get-go, but still a very cheesy game. So, not that long ago, earlier... Uh, well, it depends on when you think the week starts. But basically, a couple of days ago, earlier this week is what I was going to say, uh, I casted Bly versus Goblin. And that series was a lot of fun. If you haven't seen it yet, I'll go ahead and post a link to it down below in the description of, uh, of this one as well. In that particular series, though, we saw the players playing very similar builds all of the time. This is one of those games where 
right from the get-go, you don't really have a similar build anymore because the follow-ups are all gonna be very much so feeling-based, right? It's very hard to actually judge exactly what kind of position you're in. Now, this scout over here from Bly was huge. This is what I mean. Like, a lot of Zerg players would just forget doing a follow-up scout over here, but he now saw exactly what's going on. And I don't think actually Maxpex saw the Overlord there, so he doesn't know what's going on. Or he doesn't know that his opponent knows that he knows what's going on. Anyways, he's already making those roaches that we saw coming up in the roach warrant earlier. No Zergling speed, though. He's making 32 links, but they don't have speed. This is going to be a lot of adepts, yeah. So these adepts with, uh, with their Glaives upgrade basically just get a, a flat attack speed buff. And since they can shade around very effectively, of course, this is one of those moves that... Very powerful. Oh, he decides to cancel there anyway. Okay, that was maybe something he could have committed. He decides to instead now go after the drones at the third base, which I don't mind at all. Zerklings once again, though, forced to run around. I don't think that this is going to kill the Zerk player, but... Yeah. A little bit of damage being done there. And that's all due to the fact, though, that uh, Zerk managed to get that Overlord scout in, right? So without that OV scout, I'm pretty sure... Those Roaches and Ravagers would have been a little bit too late, and then <laughs> you're just uh, chasing your own tail, right? You're just going to be running around your own bases, and it becomes a bit of a disaster. You blink twice, and Protoss can kill an entire mineral line worth. Instead, right now, though, Maxpex warps in a couple more Adepts, and he plants down the Nexus over at the third base. A couple of Spine Crawlers come up as well. Zerkling Speed about to finish. No way he's going to commit there. At the same time, okay, he split up. He split up the Adepts. That's actually not what we normally see. I love that. Grabs three more drones. Obviously, the prism there has four slots for four adepts. So, it makes sense. Assuming you have the APM to pull this off. Now, what's the follow-up going to be? He goes for an immortal at this point. Okay. We know that Bly is very fond of going for those... Uh, those queen pushes, right? He's actually not really making that many queens in this game. But we saw him going for a lot of queen pushes. I mean... If you're not going up against a Stargate, you don't really need that many of those Queens, but they can still be very helpful if you want to go for a big all-out assault. Those Zerklings, obviously, they were produced in plentiful numbers to defend against those Adepts, but obviously they're going to be great on the offense too. Uses the Roaches and Ravages right here for zoning while the Links are working on the Nexus. And I don't think there was a Council actually, so that's 400 Minerals there down the drain for Max Pex. Man, this is already a good game. I love this. Very nice. So I was going to bring up, by the way, before this game got all crazy, um, that Maxpex has been steadily climbing through the ranks. So I've covered him in a couple of videos before, but just in case you're unfamiliar, uh, he's a very young player. As a matter of fact, he only started playing at the professional level of StarCraft back in like late 2019, early 2020. So it's only really been, you know, like a year and a little bit since this guy started participating. And on Aligulek, he's already considered to be the rank 24 in the world. And I think he's like 16 years old or something like that, so... Yeah, definitely keep him in mind. He uh, he played a lot of very cheesy builds for a while, but he's become a... I would say, especially over like the last half year or so, a very formidable, yeah, reliable Protoss player. It's, uh, it's awesome to see him climbing through the ranks, and... I mean, I feel like we've had a couple of great... Ter oh, don't lose the Prism. We've had a couple of... Uh, well, maybe not a couple, but we've had Clem, right, obviously playing Terran, and we had a couple of really good Zerg players, and his Hero Marine, and... But as far as Protosses go, I mean, we've had Showtime, obviously, who plays a very stoic approach uh, when it comes to playing with the Protoss pieces. But Maxpex is like the complete opposite of that. And it's kind of cool to see, yeah, a new Protoss player pop up at such a high level at such a young age as well from, uh, well, I guess outside Korea. It's cool. Anyways. So, wait. He's going for a Robo Bay as a follow-up. Oh, okay. So he went Glaive into... Or Glaives into Robo. So he obviously made a Prism, he made a few Immortals, I think, and now also goes into Disruptors, which is very good against those Queen-based pushes. And I guess Road Ravager-based pushes through these choke points on Beckett Industries. But then he still made two Stargates as a follow-up, too. So most of the time, whenever we see this kind of follow-up, we see the Stargates first, and then the follow-up. Okay, so he actually... Okay, whoa, 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 okay, there's a lot of things happening here. He makes only a handful of Void Rays. I think that is primarily here to try and deal with any kind of Roach Ravager-based pushes. And now he starts up Phoenix production instead. In the meantime, on the other side of the map, Zerk is gonna go for uh, an Infestation Pit right here. And now he's also adding on a ton of Swarm Hosts. I don't think that this was spotted. No, he did not see the Infestation Pit, so... Maxpex is making... I mean, you can technically pick up these Locusts as they are flying through the air quite effectively if you have enough of those uh, 
phoenixes. Anyways, here comes the Road Ravager push. I think that those... Yep, the Void Rays will be revealed, but as you can see, the Phoenix is actually staying behind, which I love. Disruptor grabs a couple of those Ravagers as well. Is there going to be enough, though, for the Protoss player to actually defend against this? Because obviously, he invested into those into those Stargates. Okay, now pops up with the Phoenixes too. Maybe he can lift up a couple of those big damage dealers. I think he will, and there should be enough, yeah, with all of this to keep that third Nexus alive. Nice moves. Anyways, here's the next plan, though, for the Zerg. The Swarmost are available. He has got creep over at the fourth nexus of the of the Protoss. A little bit awkward. Luckily, those Nexi uh, float while they're still building, I suppose. But I've got a feeling yeah, that this... I mean, assuming he targets the nexus... Hello. Okay. Yeah, assuming he targets the nexus, this, uh, this base will be killed. Once again, no cancel. So another 400 minerals down the drain. Um, Spire comes up, more roaches come up. Man, it's like Bly is making every single tech that he can come up with in the mid-game, at the very least. No Hive or anything along those lines yet. Yeah, that's a lot of Phoenixes, man. So he's got 10 Phoenixes right now, and very little anti-air here for the Zerk. I mean, there's a couple of Queens. Queens are obviously pretty good, but... Those Phoenixes can swoop into a mineral line and get quite a lot of damage. I mean, he even put down, apparently, a third Stargate. Uh, just to be producing a lot of those at once. I would love to see him going for the plus one flyer upgrade as well in the cybernetics core, which I think is almost critical if you make this many phoenixes. He goes now for the fleet beacon instead, okay. So all the roads lead to Skytos, right? <laughs> I do feel like we're heading in that direction here. Either way, Bly, if he uh, has anything to say about it though, I would not be surprised at all if he decides to go for... Well, still a lot of queens and apparently now corruptors as well, and then continue down the aggression. Swarmost are waddling on over towards the 12 o'clock position, or I guess it's like 11 o'clock position. This is where another Nexus will be acquired. There's not a whole lot to keep those units to safety. At the same time, Phoenixes are killing a ton of Overlords. Roaches and Ravages, though, in the meantime, on the other side of the map, too. Nexus is gonna live, I think, for the time being. A couple units get killed, but at the same time, there is now a run by of Roaches and Zerklings over in the Natural Expansion. Okay, one random Void Ray over in this position as well. Man, what a game! So, the goal for the Protoss player at this stage, right, is to try and max out. He knows very well that his maxed out army is going to be a very, very tough one to kill for the Zerk player. Blido is basically doing everything in his power right now to prevent the game from going into that direction. One of the keys, obviously, is to slow down the Protoss eco so they cannot actually get to that maxed out state. And so far, he's doing a phenomenal job with that. You even saw the Caustic Spray right there on those Corruptors trying to take down the Nexus. It shut down, I guess, the, the Stargate production for a little bit, but those Immortals don't mess around. Yeah, 11 kills and 6 kills, respectively. They're gonna be able to shut a lot of this down. At the same time, the Locust Wave has now arrived at the 11 o'clock, and another one of those Nexi ends up going down. Okay. So, that was a very costly army there for the Protoss player uh, to lose. The same, I guess, could be said as well for the Zerk. Yeah, Zerk actually has lost quite a bit more. The problem is... That Zerk has been happily macroing on four bases, right? And he's even now got a fifth hatchery up all the way down at the, uh... Well, I guess this would be the opposite, right? So it's like a five o'clock base. A lot of the Protoss supply right now is still caught up in Phoenixes, which is also a little bit awkward because those units, I mean, they're harassment tools, right? They're good at base defense, but they're not going to be that great on the offense. Creep spread, by the way, looking really good as well here for Bly. Uses those Locusts once again. Man, how many hands do these players have? How many hotkeys are they controlling? Alright. So every single time the Locust Wave moves, there's a couple free units. Bly right now stutter-stepping those, uh... <laughs> those Corruptors to try and pick up one unit at a time. I think he grabbed the Void Ray right there and maybe a Phoenix or two. Finally, the plus one Flyer attack starts up here for Max Pax, who's now producing three Void Rays at once. Okay. Hmm. I think that this is a game that's going well here for Zerk, though. Essentially, what Bly is trying to do right now, he's trying to suffocate his opponent, right? So he's trying to make sure that this Protoss player does not max out. And... Hey, pun not intended, by the way. And one way in which you can do that is by preventing this Protoss player from ever getting a fourth base up. Locust cannot hit air. It's one of the top ten things that science can't explain. But the Locust waves are moving forward. Okay. Decides to just kill whatever he can. Uh, perhaps at least a couple of probes here, I think. Yeah, a couple of probes. One photon cannon. 
It doesn't look like much, but those units, once again, they're basically free. I mean, the cooldown takes a little while, but it is, again, available here in just a little bit. Two Adepts warp in, uh, all the way at the bottom of the map. One Prism, somehow, some way, snuck through all of that Zerg army. Okay, he's gonna go after a few drones at the same time, though. Zerg is getting a little bit of damage done over here at the fort as well. Okay. You know what? These two Adepts are actually very successful. It's not like Zerk has got a killer eco, right? Whenever Zerk goes for one of those swarm host based armies, they will usually not sit at any more than like 60 workers. Maybe 66, but no more than that. Okay, maybe 70 if we're talking. Once again, no cancel! Man, I've seen so many Nexi going down this game. It's actually crazy. Oh, no cancel on that. That means that you lose the full value of it, right? So that's 400 minerals down the drain. Normally, you'd get 300 minerals back if you cancel it in time. And this is really starting to hurt quite a lot right now, because Mexpex is starting to run out of money. This is only game number one, by the way, right? Which is also pretty awesome. Anyways. Hmm. The creep spread also makes it very difficult, though, for this Protoss player to actually get, like, uh, in, a, in a good position, right? He's gonna be able to now grab the Locust Wave, and that's fine and all. If he can get an Immortal, that would be... Oh, whew, very close. That would be really nice there for the Zerk, is what I was gonna say. Yeah, these Immortals really uh, are super critical. So even though we didn't really start off with a, uh, a Queen-based army, eventually we're still there. Corrosive Balls, obviously, all over the place here, forcing this Protoss player to run. That's exactly what he's, uh, what he's looking for, right? Grabs one of the Void Rays, or sorry, yeah, one of the Void Rays there as well. A couple of drones once again end up going down because three Adepts were at the bottom of the map. These guys are crazy good. If Max Pex can, uh, if he can like grab himself another base and actually mine it, I think he's got a chance of crawling himself back into the game. But if he doesn't, it's gonna be extremely difficult for him to actually get to a stage where he can, yeah, fight this Protoss, or sorry, this Zerk army straight up. Here's the Crostic Spray once again being utilized there by Bly. The Roaches, Ravagers, and Queens are ooh, trying to make the best of it. Void Rays though do get it to a pretty good spot, and obviously they are fast units. Okay, a little bit of uh, control once again. Queens use their transfusers on the low ground. Disruptor does get a good hit. Prismatic alignment has been activated though on the Void Race. And that now means that these uh, Corruptors had to run for at least a second. Still, the fourth Nexus is starting to run out of money. Or, well, ooh! Okay. Starting to run out of health. Brolos is starting to run out of money. Hello, Key. Kill that, please. What? No! Bly! Huh? He knows that... Okay. He knows that the base is still up. Maybe just bringing it down to this uh, this little health is enough, though, because he knows there's no way that Zerk is really gonna let that one slide, right? So I don't think Max Pax is really gonna send a whole lot of workers over there. Although, that being said, the uh, shields will slowly start recharging. Even an Infester apparently has now added, uh, or has been added into the mix, too. Spine crawlers in the main base were apparently rebuilt. Or actually, were these even ever picked off? No, I think it was just the overlords that got picked off here by the phoenixes earlier. That this base still lives is kind of crazy to me, okay? Without this base, though, Protoss is kind of dead, right? I mean, he's got a good army. Okay, here's the Locust Wave to finish the job that the Corruptor started. There we go. And at this point, this map is basically all Zerg. Shield batteries are coming up. Even a photon cannon here to provide a little bit of detection so the creep is easier to kill if it once again gets respread in that direction. I would not mind seeing those corruptors taking a little peek in the bottom right hand corner to try and kill that prism because it's been an absolute nuisance for quite some time. Those few adepts have killed like two dozen workers, I think, but. Alright. Um, this is now Max Pex, though, putting all of his eggs in one basket. He needs this base. There's no way he's gonna be able to grab this one up top. Bly knows it. This Zerk army, though, it's really not that big. It's because a lot of that supply, once again, is caught up in... Well, it's Swarm Hosts, right? So those Swarm Hosts, they're very supply-heavy. That is still a scary army. That's a lot of Disruptors. Disruptors don't mess around. He does have Vipers right now, so that's something. Probes apparently are being killed once again by a Locust Wave. Okay. 
Abduct's one of the Void Race. Abduct's another one of the Void Race. Here comes the... Oh, ho, ho, ho! Here comes the Disruptor army. Okay, a couple of Disruptors, though, do end up getting killed. Potent Cannon's now also helping out. Keep in mind, once this Nexus finishes up, Battery Overcharge is another uh, measure of defense right here for Max Pax. He's hanging in here by the skin of his teeth, but... As long as he hangs in, it's all he really needs. You can see Bly very hesitant right now, going for those Queens or going for those Hydras, just because of those Disruptors. So his best option at this point, I mean, Phoenixes are gonna absolutely shut down Mutas, so your only real option at this point is just Corruptors and Vipers. Which works out quite well. Okay, once again, another Locust Wave comes up. Maybe he can just kill the Nexus itself. I think that's what he's gonna try and do. Well, he's just trying to maximize damage, I guess. Couple pylons, couple of things here and there. That base, though, is starting to run very low, and it does get killed. But at least this new base has been acquired. Bly just, uh... Adding on as many Corruptors here as he can. He's got pretty good upgrades on them as well, but his Protoss Air Army does not mess around. I'd love to see him continuously upgrade that, but I guess it's... It's getting a little bit too expensive. Ultralisk Cavern now even comes up. Ultras actually make a lot of sense here. So the Ultras will be able to uh, lift through those Disruptor hits relatively nicely. This is such a technical army though from the Zerg player, right? Even a couple Queens right here at the front as well. Fungal Growth, Corrosive Biles. There's the Purification Novas once again being utilized. Battery Overcharge though, also available. Another Purification Nova, but already feels like the Zerk army is kind of hunting down a lot of this army. I would not mind seeing a Locust Wave heading on over in the, the Mineral Line here as well. Even a High Templar has been warped in right now. Carriers as a follow-up, Psionic Storm now also added into the mix. Prismatic Alignment once again activated, but at this point there's enough of those Corruptors to actually start picking off those Void Rays one at a time, especially since a lot of those Void Rays, they have full shields, but pretty much no health remaining because of that Micro from earlier. Okay, and I think that might just be a little bit too much Zerg here in the end, but that was... That was a sick game. And this is only game number one! <laughs> nice. Death by a thousand cuts. I think that's the best way to describe that first game, right? Bly did a little bit of everything. A 12 pool, and then a hatchery inside of the wall off, and then roaches and ravagers and queens, and he went for... Obviously, those Swarm Host, and Zergling run-bys, and Roach run-bys, and then into Corruptors, and Vipers, and Infestors, and even at Ultralisk coming, I mean... I'm not sure exactly how many hands the man has, but... A lot of those units do require a separate control group, so I don't, <laughs> I don't really know, man. That was awesome. Well done right there. Valiant effort as well, by the way, by Mexpex, holding on for such a long time. But, uh, yeah, it did feel like Bly was in the driver's seat of that game for a very long time. I wonder how it, I wonder how it would have looked, though, if Mexpex just, you know, played a, a slightly a slightly bit more on point. Because one thing you gotta keep in mind, right, is that he made really big commitments in, for example, those adept pushes that didn't really achieve too, too much, especially in the early game. And he ended up not cancelling a bunch of those Nexi when they were about to be killed. And... I mean, we saw him lose probably like 2,000 resources or so worth for basically free throughout that game. Oh, he's even blocking the gas right now. I love it. Uh, but we saw him, uh, yeah, we saw him losing a very significant chunk of resources free for free. And obviously the same could be said there for the Zerk. But as we all know, the Zerk, generally speaking, have a bit more of an expendable army. Whereas Protoss really needs to try and keep a lot of their, yeah, a lot of their resources alive. Anyways. Let's see what ends up going down right here on Oxide. So Oxide, it's a map with a little ramp right here that leads from the low ground to the top of the natural. And this is, uh, yeah, gonna prevent any of those hatchery blocks, right? I mean, you could technically still get a hatchery up here, but it's gonna be far harder to pull off because there's only really one spot for it and just the probe would be able to block it. Love what Max Pax is doing though, sending that probe early, blocking the natural expansion, forcing Blight to go for the third base, although... Knowing Bly, he doesn't really mind this too much, because it means that he can start spreading creep from here. If this is going to be a Stargate opener, uh, I think that Bly is going to be more than happy to spread the creep a little bit faster towards his opponent's side of the map. Okay, Cybernetic score has finished up. What is going to be the order of business? Should be a Stargate. There it is. Stargate, of course. 
even after all this time, still the gold standard. It's just a good, well-rounded opener. Usually what we see with Protoss players going for the Stargate is they, they grab a Void Ray or an Oracle first, and they can use that to leverage themselves into a quick third base. So we've been seeing third bases as quick as like 3 minutes and 50 seconds recently, uh, which... Yeah, it's literally Protoss players taking that third base off of like three units. But with the way that Zerg players play, especially when their expo is, you know, taken right here, um, they have to wait until the, the bases are connected, until they can reliably defend against these pesky adepts. So usually Zerg players won't get too adventurous early on, so it's a relatively safe, uh, a relatively safe move to make. Alright, so it's going to be an Oracle first. I don't mind it. One drone left in the gas geyser. Link speed will finish up quite a bit sooner in this particular game. Makes a lot of sense. Yeah, so more of a more of a standard game. Now, in the games that we saw Bly play against Goblin a couple of days ago, um, whenever it was a Stargate start like this, he just, as soon as he sniffed it out, started making a ton of queens. And he was making queens really early on and just started walking them much sooner as well than most Zerg players would. So most of the time we see Zerg players waiting for at least a little bit until they've got a, a couple of roaches out and maybe a couple of Zerglings as well. But Bly has been walking the Queens basically ahead of the rest of the army that was still in production at the time. So I think he was doing it, if I recall correctly, off of like 42 workers or so. So yeah, he's already adding on a lot more Queens once again. No lair. Uh, if he pops down a Roach Warren soon, I think we can expect a build from him like that once more. That being said, I mean, I was talking about it, right? We don't actually... Oh, okay. We don't actually see a third Nexus. Instead, we see Max Max going for a second Stargate and a Fleet Beacon? Uh, what? Two base Fleet Beacon. This is Max Max playing, right? It's not a, it's not a Platinum League game or whatever. I know that 2-base Fleet Beacon is quite a popular build on the ladder, like, below Master League, I guess. Um, I'm not so sure that I like this. I mean, he's gonna be able to start up either Tempest or Carriers quite early on. I mean, I like it and I don't like it at the same time. I think that, theoretically speaking, this is something that can deal a lot of damage because it's a mind game, right? So Zerk players might look at this and be like, what? I don't know what to do against this. But theoretically speaking, it seems so bad to me because if Zerk knows what they're playing against, so it's going to be two base carrier, apparently. Um, I don't think this is something that should get too much work done, right? Am I, am I wrong? I'm not sure. Overseer gets morphed in right now. Roach speed is coming up. Bly. Yeah, he didn't... Okay, so Bly obviously saw the timing right there of the third Nexus, and he knows when it's supposed to be taken. So the standard time, like I said, is like 4 minutes, 3.50 maybe, if Protoss is being a bit greedy. This was like a good minute later, and there's no way that Bly did not pick up on that. So Overseer goes in right now, and he sees what's going on. Immediately makes a ton of additional workers. Forge comes up, and there's the carriers. Okay, so at the six-minute mark, we have three bases for Protoss, almost done, and two carriers. I like it. Uh, how many queens are we at? We're six queens in. Queens are desperately pushing creep in the direction of where the third base is at for the Protoss player. The creep thread, by the way, has been really nice. Uh, Hydralisk then comes up. The problem is, right? Carriers are good. Especially when you have a lot of them. Two carriers can be good as well if you catch your opponent off guard, but it's unlikely to really get anything done. Meaning that for the next, like... You got a lot of energy on those queens. I think this should be fine, right? I feel like for the next five minutes or so, Protoss doesn't really have anything to, to do. At the same time, while this is happening, Roaches have made their way across the map. This is a lovely little push right here from Bly. Okay. Yeah, the best defense apparently is the offense. He's forcing the recoil right there on those carriers and keeping his queens alive by attacking right here with the rest of his army. And look at those interceptor ships, right? So interceptors, they're really good with attack upgrades. They're really good when you have a lot of them. At this stage in the game, though, you have neither, right? So it's... It's a shaky start. Hmm, okay, so... 
One thing that Max Specs is apparently anticipating here is a switch towards Corruptors to try and deal with those carriers, but instead we now see Hydralis coming up. So the Zerg ground army is really good until Disruptors come out or until um, High Templar come out, right? Up until that point, and I guess if you're playing like this kind of army here, so it's, it's four Stargate in three base. If you're playing this kind of eco, there's no way that Protoss is going to be able to grab themselves Disruptors and High Templar as well. So Queen Hydra against an army that doesn't have any High Templar or any Disruptors, I don't mind it. Okay, he decides to now Chrono Boost out a couple of Tempest instead. But here come uh, Brenda and the Queens. Brenda and the, the rest of the Knitting Club are here. Interceptors have 80 health. Hydras have very high attack speed. So he's just trying to kill all of the Interceptor ships. Interceptor ships do get rebuilt directly in the carrier. But as long as the Interceptors are gone, Zork is going to be able to kill that third base relatively easily. Yeah, great game here by Bly, right? Really nice game. So he kills the third Nexus. Now Protoss is going to be stuck on two bases. One thing I guess to note is that the main and the natural tend to start running out of minerals by about the 10 minute mark. So that means we are, yeah, just mere minutes away until Maxpex is going to either have to go for an all out assault, which I don't think he can really afford, or he's going to have to make another move for another base. Oracle's in the meantime on the other side of the map. Plus one flyer attacks is finishing. So that at the very least helps out quite a bit. Plus one, plus one finally starts here as well for Bly. He goes into an Infester. Unironically, I think Microbial Shroud is actually a fantastic idea right here for Bly. When the Protoss army, once again, does not have High Templar or Disruptors, Hydra Microbial Shroud kills everything in the air. Maybe a couple Ultras into the mix is not a bad idea either. Look at the creep threat, man. Ay, ay, ay. Bly is playing some cool StarCraft. I really like what the man is doing. Very different than the way that a Cero or a Dark or, or you know, a Raynor would play this matchup. But effective nonetheless. So he's bringing Spore Crawlers right now to the front because of that insane creep threat, right? Protoss has barely any detection. Once again, this Nexus is never gonna live. Yeah, forced to cancel it. <laughs> so he's going Spore Crawler, Hydra, Infester against this. Now, that being said, okay. Max Pax does still have a lot of probes alive from that earlier stage in the game. He's got to be able to now secure this other base. He has a shield battery over here. This is not really an, uh, yeah, not really a position that Bly can just easily break. Viper's now coming up as well. Bly also only, only has 59 workers here, so his eco is actually not that great. It's not like he can lose this army and remax, because he's not even maxed in the first place. This is probably not the response, though, that Max Pax was banking on. He was probably hoping that his opponent would go for uh, a Corruptor switch. Because then those Void Rays would have made a lot more sense. Is he going to go Microbial Shroud or Fungal? Microbial Shroud! There it is! Yes! Ay, 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 ay. So Microbial Shroud, it's a spell that they use. The Zerg players, that is, to reduce the damage from air by 50%. They added this into the game as a replacement for the Infested Terran. And we have seen this a handful of times at the professional level of StarCraft. And even though I hated the ability initially, there are some really good moments where it's actually super strong. He can now even start abducting those units as well. Yep, there we go. Phenomenal game here by Bly. I love this. Really good stuff. Here's the Queens even, man. The Creep Spray is so good that the Queens can just... Pop away from their hatcheries for a little while to go to the front. Max Pax has taken a base at the 3 o'clock position. I don't think this was necessarily scouted, but... I mean, he can recall workers over there, I suppose. The main mistake I think that Bly can make right now is pushing up this ramp and then over committing. Because this is still... You know, it's still a proto Skytel's army. There's now also Disruptors out, which I really love. Disruptors are fantastic here. Okay, good control. If you get recoil units over towards the third base and actually mine it, that would be phenomenal. Oh. The thing is, right, the counter to disruptors is usually vipers. 
I mean, the Vipers, I guess, are dead. But... Yeah, he's making new ones. I guess he can recall workers to watch this base if he really wants to. He needs to, man. He needs workers. Yep, there we go! He recalls a couple of the probes over to watch a base that's been unscouted. If Max Max can crawl himself back into this game, I'm gonna have to give him a standing ovation. But at this point, I feel like it's... It's gonna be very hard to do so. Zerklings are being made. Um... There's like a handful of bases that Bly is not able to scout right now. If he... Gives this Protoss player a lot of time, maybe there's a chance, okay? That's one good start! Massive Purification Nova does come down. Bly is only sitting at 75 workers, right? Which... I mean, is more than he uh, has had in the last couple of ZVPs that I've casted, you know, of him, but... Protoss... Oh my god, Bly... Oh god, Max Fax. If you pull this one off... I would be very surprised. It is kind of ironic, though, how hard Zerk really has to try here to make two base protos go down, right? I mean, technically it's three base right now, but he's been on five bases for a long time. Protoss players are real strong defensively these days, man. They don't mess around. Breaking this position is hard. You know what? I would I would actually like to see a couple of Ultralisk into the mix. Well, here we go. Instead, abductions are being used. Once again, Purification Nova comes up. A couple of carriers, though, have already been picked off. And while those traits are by no means efficient here for the Zerk... Yeah, the Zerklings, by the way, have found the third base here, so... Yeah, while these traits are not particularly efficient over the last couple of minutes, at this point, I don't think Bly really cares that much. Although, I say that, and I glance down at the bottom of the screen, he doesn't have an army to remax, right? Like, it's not like he... He can lose all of this with, like, two Purification Novas of his opponent and then actually live to tell the tale, right? So he needs to get... Oh, uh. He needs to keep trading efficiently. I think the best move you can make right now as Zerk is just hang out over here for a while. Try and get a bank. Make double sure that Protoss does not get another base up. Max Pack's now taking one of the bases that's normally the Zerk's. A total desperation move. Carrier interceptor ships do get killed here all the time. They cost 15 minerals each. So... Yeah. If you can... I actually think Ultras would be good, right? So you can get the Ultras on top of the Disruptors. I think that would be really nice. Yeah, instead he's, he's using the Zerklings for the same idea. Plus three, plus three comes up here for the Zerk as well, adding on more and more spores. Um, if you can just bleed out this Protoss player, right? Look at this. The main base is gone. Natural now has, like, way more workers than this base can actually handle. I think slowly bleeding out this army is not a terrible idea. Okay, once again, though, good. Okay, very nice abductions over there. The disruptors get killed. Even a parasitic bomb is on top of all of those Protoss flyers. No micro there from Max Specs until just now. So well, I guess a lot of these units have very high shields. So it doesn't really matter all too much. Most of the interceptor ships are gone, though. And that means that those carriers are slowly turning to uh, to paperweights, right? They're not really going to be able to achieve that much. Every single interceptor ship right now counts. There it is. G is called by Max Specs. Just a single G. <laughs> Game or good. Probably a little typo, but yeah. He does call the GG right there, which means that Bly obtains the victory to 2-0. If you enjoyed watching this video and you made it all the way until the very end, do me a favor and hit that like button down below. It only takes about one second, but it might very well get this video picked up by the YouTube algorithm. And if you want to see more, make sure you hit the subscribe button as well as the little bell icon so you get notified as soon as future videos go live. For now, though, I want to thank you for watching. Have an amazing day. Don't forget to smile. And I'll see you once again in the next one.